There we go. There we go. It took that long for me. And yes, I actually watched it to the end credits this time. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 8 of WandaVision. And this is the first episode that actually has me wanting to watch it. Is it Thursday night? Did I play Friday morning? Or Friday? Or Saturday? Whichever day that it actually comes out. Friday, I will actually watch the next episode on Friday because this is a good episode. It explains a lot of the things that we've been seeing. It explains the themes of the television shows, uh, the relevance it has to Wanda. It also explains Agnes, who was apparently a Salem trial witch. That was a bit of an interesting little tidbit. It was five minutes of a bunch of ladies going, <coughs> I'm just imagining a bunch of actresses around her and just in this room, no special effects or anything. They're all just going, that would've been very funny to watch. Since the beginning, the show has slowly done this gradual climb into a better form of narrative television. I will again point out the flaws of a slow burn, especially when the relevancies to the subject matter you're talking about are so slow and so little, because eventually you have an episode like this one that just explains everything and those aren't bad but admittedly sometimes slow burns can have those little tidbits piece throughout again i'll use true detective as an example that show took so long to build the actual narrative but at the same time you were so invested in the development of the characters as well as the very slow but building a kind of detective case that was going along with it. But again, they didn't have an episode that just explained everything. You eventually found it added along with them. This one, essentially, the whole mystery of everything that's been going on was kind of explained. And one of the factors as to why Wanda did it is because the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. or whoever this guy is, continues to be the dumbest fucking idiot on the planet. He has done nothing but stupid decisions throughout this entire series. And then we find that the creation of all of it is his dumb ass saying, Hey Wanda, I hear you wanted to see your dead boyfriend's corpse. Look at him. Here he is. We ripped him apart, but you can't have him. But there he is. Look at it. We're technically just ripping him apart as though he's nothing. Does that make you feel better? This guy is just so stupid. Stupid. He is the third iteration of William Hurt's character from The Incredible Hulk. Just a dumb head of military dude making dumb head of military decisions that eventually lead to dumb military consequences. I'm just surprised that they would do this arc for the third time in the entirety of the MCU. But admittedly, he is just a side note. Thankfully, the actual story that is building in front of us is very, very gripping and I liked how it talked more about Wanda and Pietro's past. I did like how they incorporated the old sitcoms, especially since I think Disney owns all of those now. The cut to the bomb exploding was really well done. That really gripped me. And then going back through time and figuring out everything that led up to the creation of Westview. I liked how Westview was a crap town. I liked how after the snap, things still had not returned to normal in most places. And I think that's something that the MCU still has a very good opportunity to show. Just to show how the world has slowly but still not come back from losing half of the population and then the rest coming back again. And then it kind of gives that double-sided blade conversation about what she did. Was it better for Westview? Because Westview was basically in the pits. No, everyone looked miserable. The whole town was basically falling apart. But now it is better, but it's under uh, control and no one has their own free will. And something I was worried about was that Agnes was the big bad controlling and all, but no, it is still Wanda as far as we know because Agnes is trying to find it out. She's trying to figure it out. And then at the very end of the episode, she proclaims that Wanda is the Scarlet Witch, which I thought we all had that idea, but apparently there was maybe a different thing. And again, this is all bringing up that whole conversation of whether or not mutants are actually in Marvel. We're still waiting on that. Otherwise though, I did enjoy it. I thought it was cool. A bit basic, a bit rudimentary. Again, dumb, dumb military guy being dumb, dumb. But on a whole, this is a very gripping episode. It's probably the best episode the show has had. Is it Emmy nomination award worthy Elizabeth Olsen best performance ever good? No, no it's not, but it's still decent. Otherwise though, I'll be really interested to see how the series ends. I went from absolutely couldn't give a crap about it to now actually being genuinely invested. So good on you show. I'm gonna give this episode a five out of seven. I'm very, very excited to see what happens next. I'm curious to see if there's a lot of other questions that are going to be answered. Particularly my big one is whether other Pietro is the 
X-Men 1, and we actually finally have Marvel mutants. Does that mean Hugh Jackman can come back as Wolverine? Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on Friday. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.